Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also rise to support the report by the committee. Uh, but I also want to single out some few um, uh, nominees that I observed one, two, or three things and learned something. Honorable Speaker, the nomination of um, the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho is an inspiration to so, so many young people out there who may have lost hope. That it really doesn't matter where you come from, how you, you know, scored in, uh, in uh, the, the, the grades that you got in high school. If you pursue, persist, and persevere, you will achieve your dreams. So, Honorable Speaker, this, is, this really should be a, a great inspiration. And even as I say that, Honorable Speaker, I'll also make uh, uh, on a light note and say those who are actually saying and talking about the opulence on some nominees or some former CSS, who is uh, like the Honorable uh, Onesmas Kipchumba Mulkomen. I don't know how you'll talk about the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, who also has a test for good things. And this should actually go out there in public, that people should know, and every person outside there should know that um, you are not poor because somebody else is rich. You can actually learn something from a person instead of actually feeling bad that, okay, you are wearing this shirt or you are having a very expensive watch, you are putting on a very expensive watch because you took my money. Which money? I mean, that should, people should be made to understand that people have got different tastes. There are people who love clothes, attires, there are people who love land, there are people who love big cars, and there are also people who love other forms of excitement and even traveling. So, Honorable Speaker, this was a great inspiration, Honorable Speaker, on Ali Hassan Joho. And number two, Honorable Speaker, there was also an inspiration for the young people of Mr. Eric Mureidi Muga, a young man that appeared before you and even confessed not to be having a car. You know, he's been able to maneuver through the systems, maneuver through the network, and that clearly shows that your social network is a social network. And today, and I believe that when he gets uh, uh, his first uh, salary, he'll be able to acquire himself a car. So this is a great inspiration. And finally, Honorable Speaker, I'm also very excited by the nomination of uh, Mr. Julius Migo Sogamba. Before he appeared before your committee, Honorable Speaker, in the corridors of Parliament, members were saying they, you know, that that ministry possibly required a career educationist. But the confirmation of, uh, I mean, the, the, his performance truly confirmed that this is a person who is competent to what he was actually appointed. Give him a minute and wind up. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Sorry, I had uh, missed the point that it was one minute. So this Julius Migo Sogamba performed very well, and I saw honorable members and even uh, members of the public saying that he exceeded their expectations, being a career advocate of the High Court. That again shows that advocates are all round. They can actually do anything. It can be a, uh, like you've seen Professor Kiture Kindiki and so many others, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Speaker, I am, really want to support this and also tell the nominees that once they assume office, not to make themselves some demigods, not to, uh, you know, de develop a, what we call in basic language big heads, you know, by pride and everything. Find a way to relate with every person and South Kenyans. And this house will keep them, will keep them in check on every action that they're going to take while serving in office. I support Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. And I will start by encouraging my colleagues that uh, our role as members of parliament is oversight. And we oversight as a house. We don't oversight as, as part of us. So it's really sickening when some members want to think they're in government or they're not in government, Honorable Speaker. We as a house, ours is to oversight. Not to forget what uh, cost all this is that we had a cabinet that was not able to perform its duties. We had a cabinet that let the president down. We had a cabinet that let Kenyans down. 
and it gave an opportunity to the president to have a new cabinet, which we hope it's going to help him to serve Kenyans better. Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> we, will continue, <clears throat> we will continue oversighting because it's our, our responsibility as a house. Some of the colleagues that have joined the cabinet are members of this house. We expect nothing but performance. We expect nothing but good manners. Kenyans expect more that they perform, they have been here, they know things that have been hurting Kenyans, that they go and perform and do good to Kenyans. That was a wake-up call for all of us, that Kenyans are still angry. I urge the President of Republic of Kenya to continue doing more in ensuring that every other Kenyan must feel comfortable to live in Kenya by ensuring that we have regional balance, by ensuring that every Kenya, <clears throat> it doesn't matter where they come from, but they must feel part and parcel of, 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 of this country. And I want to congratulate my minority leader, Honorable Pio Wandai. I want to congratulate uh, Honre Bombadi, I want to congratulate Honre Bojo, I want to congratulate my big brother Honre Boparanya and my sister, the Minister for Health, if we are going to approve them, that I know that they can do a good job. Please don't let Kenyans down. Honorable members, Kenyans out there are still watching us, are still looking at us to ensure that we, we continue oversighting this government so that we can have a better country for all of us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I wish them all good. Santin. <clears throat>